Hello. So, uh, first of all, I have to do a little disclaimer. I am not a car theft. Uh, I, I will not steal your car. And I would not try to steal any car. So, uh, all of uh, what you will see during this presentation is my own experience on my own cars. Uh, someone tried to steal my own cars and uh, I'll tell you all about that. And, uh, yes, definitely my own cars. <laughs> <laughs> So, who am I? Uh, I'm a system administrator. I started at uh, 98, I think. Uh, I started playing with Linux. I like to play with uh, electronics. Currently, I'm CEO of uh, One Edge uh, and also CTO of GetCalder, head of DevOps of SiteGround. And I'm teaching uh, Linux system administration and network security courses in Sofia University. I'm one of the organizers of uh, OpenFest and a few other events in Bulgaria. Uh, during my spare time, I like to play with hardware. Uh, I like uh, home automation systems, car automation systems. So uh, this talk is more about uh, how I decided to uh, protect my car. And uh, this is my car. <laughs> uh, strange. Uh, it doesn't look like this. It's more like this. Uh, sorry for that. This is my car, it's called Maznu, and it's pink uh, since uh, two weeks ago. So uh, I want to protect this car from getting away from me. And unfortunately cars are very strange uh, mobile devices that can actually be taken away from you very, very easily. And uh, protecting a device that can move in with uh, 150 kilometers an hour is uh, a bit of a problem. Uh, and making it uh, stay still is another completely different problem that uh, all car man manufacturers are trying to solve. And uh, me as not a car manufacturer, I want to chain my car uh, to the ground uh, when it is parked wherever I parked it, uh, even in the woods. So, uh, is it at all possible to secure a car? My thinking is not. Uh, impo it's impossible. Everyone that wants to steal your car will steal it. By the end of this talk, uh, most of you that have cars would go and see to check if their cars are still there. <laughs> Probably. I hope so. <clears throat> so, uh, the physical security of uh, any car uh, is uh, there is no physical security of a car. Uh, meaning, uh, my meaning is that uh, all of the uh, walks can be picked. I have, I own a set of these, and uh, actually, with uh, an hour of playing with these, you can open your car. Usually, most of the cars are car walks are pretty easy, even though they look very, very hard to pick. Uh, they're sometimes easier than door walks, normal. Uh, house walks. So uh, picking your car uh, shouldn't be a problem and if you're lucky when someone tries to steal something from your car uh, he will be using these tools and he will not damage your car and this is only if you're very 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 lucky because most of the times this is what you face and I have faced it quite some times like five times already on my cars and I hate it so one of my friends actually told me about his father uh, seeing this one, uh, one time on his car. Uh, he decided not to keep anything uh, valuable in his car and his car is always, always, always unlocked. Unfortunately, even though it is unlocked, uh, some uh, thieves simply don't bother to check if the door is open. They simply break the glass. Uh, so, uh, you don't care much about your walks. These walks require uh, a little force to be broken out of uh, the uh, metal that uh, they're uh, connected to. Uh, it's not very hard to remove them uh, as a whole. Also, uh, as you can see, this walk was picked by uh, some idiot uh, with a screwdriver and uh, he tried to unlock the door and most probably was unable to uh, turn it so he decided to break behind it 
So uh, it, it wasn't very, very hard to unlock that car. And it happened to me, uh, my car requires just a little bit more than a push to remove the uh, keyhole and uh, open the door. So the keyhole is something that uh, is uh, imaginary and it can stop only polite guys. Uh, only people that don't want to steal your car. Uh, but uh, everyone that wants to do it, uh, <laughs> they don't care about that. Uh, it's interesting to see this. Uh, uh, this is a car door that uh, is uh, open for repairs. And usually here you have a, a metal thing or plastic thing that is in the gap between the window and uh, the uh, iron of the door. And uh, when you remove this, because it's easily removed, you can actually access most parts of the door between the uh, glass and everything else. And uh, most cars usually have something to unlock the door from inside a button. And this button is not very hard to open, uh, to reach. I myself have done so to open the, the, the door of one of my cars because I simply forgot the keys inside. So uh, it was locked from... <laughs> from the uh, alarm and I couldn't open it. It was funny to uh, pick your own car and uh, it was stressful for me, I don't know, for the uh, thieves that are uh, stealing cars, but for me it was stressful to see people walking around me and not telling me anything that I'm trying to open this car with a piece of metal <laughs> from, uh, from the outside. Everyone could see me. Uh, even the police officer stopped by, looked, uh, looked at me for a minute and continued. So uh, this is how stupid it is uh, to protect your car. Obviously the thieves don't care. They are not bothered by it because they can simply say, okay, this is my car, you see, these, these are my keys there. But uh, if uh, the owner of the car is like me and I can forget my keys inside the car for a week, uh, it's a problem, <laughs> it's a big problem. Uh, and this is a very easy way to open your car. So, uh, last year, uh, someone tried to steal, uh, to steal one of my cars. And this year, I was in Barcelona like uh, uh, two weeks ago and for lost the keys to the rental car. And then I saw that. Uh, the company came, uh, they didn't have a spare, uh, spare keys for the car. So they came with this and uh, simply did that. Uh, they pumped this thing, uh, air jacked the door, uh, opened it just a little bit, then unlocked it from the inside, uh, simply pushing the button unlock on the door with a simple piece of metal, uh, I think half a uh, meter and a half long. So uh, this kit here allows you to open most doors and uh, it's strange uh, how easy it is to use it and uh, it's even stranger the price and you can order it right now uh, I'm not telling you to order it just uh, keep in mind that uh, it's pretty cheap for everyone uh, even though more car thieves don't simply use these things they break your glass again a very easy uh, do not watch YouTube videos how to break uh, the glass of a car you it's hilarious, too much. So, uh, the other thing, uh, why the hell? Let me change this to maybe, what was it? This one? Okay. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. So, uh, one other thing is that if you protect your car, make, make it as secure as possible. No one could move it from there without your keys and uh, whatever. Uh, unfortunately, there are these things here that uh, allows anyone to simply put them under the wheels of your car and tow your car away from you without even triggering the alarm at all. Uh, and I have to tell you that this thing uh, even though the alarm was on on this car, the alarm never triggered. We were in underground garage, uh, never 
had a sound from that car. Uh, this is not from uh, Barcelona, I found it on, in, on the internet, but it looked exactly the same. Two guys with the tow truck came, opened the door, gave me uh, all my belongings from the car, and <coughs> then put those things uh, <laughs> under the uh, wheels of the car and tow it away. So, uh, if you think that uh, no one sh uh, would be able to move your car, uh, think twice. Uh, in my case, in Sofia, I have the opportunity to park in uh, hmm, something like a garden. Uh, it's more like an off-road uh, test track, where I believe these wouldn't work pretty easy. So, this is where I park the pink car just to be sure that no one could move it and uh, only an SUV can reach it again. Uh, yeah, it's stupid, I know, but uh, it's uh, protecting from this. And then we go to the alarms and I will be speaking more about uh, technical, the technical aspect of uh, uh, the protection of your car. And most alarms uh, don't detect as uh, we saw air jacking. Uh, don't, uh, some alarms are pretty easy uh, because they have to be uh, connected while you're not uh, in the car. They have to be powered on. Uh, they can be fried by simply using a shocking... Uh, uh, the police... Uh, mm, taser. Taser. Not taser, but the police... Uh, Okay. Stick. Uh, stick, yeah, pretty <laughs> stick, okay. So uh, the idea is that uh, you simply uh, apply 10,000 volts uh, to, the, uh, to any metal part of your car and you shock everything inside it uh, mm -hmm. that is currently connected. Most of the computers are not currently connected because you haven't started the car, but uh, the alarm has to be connected. And most alarms are not protected at all from this. So uh, you can disable the alarm like this. And some uh, Mercedes S-Class had very strange uh, options to their alarms. You could simply light a fire underneath the car and it will unlock itself. Uh, so yeah, alarms are pretty stupid sometimes. Uh, you can disable them. And the other thing is that uh, most default alarms are using the horns of uh, uh, your car. It, it should be okay if the horns were not just uh, on the back of your grill of uh, the car. So uh, what happened to me, <laughs> to my car that is parked outside and it still has these two holes in the grill that uh, were cut from the thieves and they simply cut the cables to my horns. So, no sound, nothing from my car at all. And it would, be, it would be someone else's car right now if it wasn't for some other things that I will tell you more about it. Uh, some of the uh, alarms uh, have uh, use of the flash and lights uh, of your car to simply locate your car. Uh, in my case, uh, it's dark where I'm parking the car and if I don't see any lights, I wouldn't know if it is my car or someone else's car that is uh, sounding the alarm. Um, you see something else in a minute. Uh, so what the immobilizer systems do usually on your cars? Uh, immobilizer systems are trying to protect your car by simply not allowing it to start at all. So most of the cars now uh, have too many computers to run without a computer. So uh, immobilizers try to uh, disable all of your computers. But if you have an older car like mine, uh, it's a little bit stranger because that car has electricity only for starting and a little bit for controlling the engine and almost nothing else. So uh, with these cars, uh, you cannot electric, uh, electrically uh, restrict the car too much. There are only a few parts like fuel pump that requires electricity, uh, your engine uh, for controlling the flow of uh, fuel and uh, air and your start computer, nothing else. And for these, there are only a few cables. These are mostly the easiest cars to uh, steal. 
The new cars, on the other hand, have like uh, my Land Cruiser right now has seven computers in it, seven different separated computers. And if some of those uh, is not responding, the whole car will not move at all. And it has a separate computer only to authenticate the key and uh, the other computers with the key. So uh, in my case, these guys simply stole the starting computer with the key and I had three ton brick in front of my home and I couldn't move it at all. So uh, you can uh, immobilizers are breaking the connections between computers between, between electro, uh, electronic parts of your car and uh, unfortunately for you uh, it's not random uh, the place where they will break the connection of a certain computer or cable it's a standard uh, standardized uh, place so when i bought my land cruiser i actually bought the service guide with it so i had all the electrical sch uh, schematics of the car uh, in front of me i studied them uh, well and found where I could break the cables on the most uh, uh, non-intuitive place and not once like the most mobilizers I can do it on like three to five places uh, the authentication that the mobilizer requires uh, is uh, usually a radio key and these radio keys are pretty stupid most of the times uh, if you have a receiver on uh, 315 MHz and uh, uh, 434 MHz, which are standard uh, frequencies, uh, and as standard frequencies, there are standard receivers for $5 each, uh, you can connect those to an Arduino and snoop on the calls. And since these devices that lack the power to have any good encryption, they simply use uh, some codes that uh, you can replay later. So uh, sometimes they have a little bit better security, but uh, if you look over the internet, there are like uh, 10 papers that uh, describe how alarm systems work and how you can actually pick all of these uh, uh, radio signals and replay them and open most cars. Not all of them, but most cars. Uh, even last year, uh, the BMW 7 Series was opened uh, on Blackhead, I think, or something like that. Uh, like this, uh, I have watched the video, not the presentation. <laughs> so, uh, for the whites, uh, uh, have you <coughs> used something like this to protect your car from the sun? Now, the uh, guys uh, that tried to steal my car used that, and uh, that is a kitchen aluminum foil, and they used just a little bit of spit or uh, water, I don't know, uh, and glued that to all of my whites, uh, turn signals and everything. So, after they cut the horns, uh, now they covered all of the whites, and this doesn't uh, uh, allow any white to get out. Uh, I wouldn't be able to see anything in that dark spot where I'm parking my car and they could work uh, freely for hours without no one understanding that there is someone picking your car right now and taking it away. Uh, I don't have pictures of my car covered with that. I was thinking that I should do that, but uh, sorry. It's a strange experience to see that. The first thing you see, you think, uh, were I at the service, uh, did they left that or maybe the uh, auto cleaning company, I don't know, someone forgot it. And then you see the open door and something changes. So uh, the other thing, yes, uh, most cars, uh, 315 kilohertz, okay, kilohertz, not megahertz, sorry. Uh, scanner for those, uh, you can buy from DOXT for around $30. Uh, there's uh, the Chinese things sometimes <coughs> come with uh, uh, software for Windows that you can actually collect all the uh, information. These are only receivers, but for same, the same amount or like $40, you can also buy a transceiver. So you get my point, right? I hope so. <laughs> uh, now, these are play attacks that I'm talking about, they're not easy, all of them. Some of them you actually have to uh, understand the protocol because uh, they're uh, sending the information with different uh, 
uh, clocks every time uh, based on a table that they keep in the key uh, and they have the same table for uh, if you like 10 different uh, uh, codes that are using to start the sequence of sending the actual uh, number that is your key. Uh, it's pretty simple. If you want to steal someone's car with a key, uh, it's, you have to simply wait for 10 or 20 times when he's walking or unlocking the, uh, his car. After that, you have all the codes that you need and uh, most of the time if there is something uh, that they decide to do crypto which is almost no crypto it's usually a sort of a certain number that you have to find uh, it's not very hard and most for most alarms for the default alarms there is information on the internet how to do it so but if the person that is trying to steal your car uh, is uh, well educated uh, this shouldn't be a big problem and uh, these $30 devices uh, are for very expensive cars like uh, 100,000 uh, euros or more uh, they use the same stupid technology and uh, it's strange so uh, the, uh, the other cars that are not uh, uh, very easy to crack with this system uh, you should go with uh, another system uh, with, uh, that is directly breaking the car and uh, after you break the car, okay, uh, break the window or open the car, whatever you, uh, you want, uh, after you enter in the car, some of the cars, uh, for like, like in my case with Toyota, they uh, use the same start computer on uh, most uh, of their uh, cars, so you can actually get a replacement starting computer with a key that is linked to this computer and simply open the car, replace the starting computer with a new one and this new one is linked to your keys that you already have and you simply start the car and go. <laughs> That's uh, uh, a very strange situation but BMW, Toyota, uh, Volvo, all of them have this problem. And so what I decided to do to prevent hacking. Uh, I decided to do uh, to have an Arduino with a GSM shield uh, for uh, simply connecting to my car, GPS shield uh, to find where my car is, uh, Bluetooth shield which is still not is, it's still in the working for out, uh, removing my keys as a whole. Uh, RFID, this is for protecting the, uh, everything inside the car with uh, RFID and since uh, there is jamming and uh, I'll talk a little bit more about it, I also have Iridium ordered uh, this year and the relay shields, I'll show you more about it. So the GSM shields, uh, I have them here actually, some of those. Uh, this is a GSM shield from SparkFun, this is from Deal Extreme. Uh, both are similar prices, uh, both of them are pretty easy to work with. I actually have a project at GitHub uh, and there is a link on, at the end of the presentation that uh, m makes use of these shoots to turn on and off relays, uh, actually what I'm doing with the cars. So uh, I needed that with an Arduino. Then uh, I needed a GPS shield, which is uh, this thing here. And uh, in a few minutes, I'll show you a little bit different GPS shield. So these GPS devices, they're pretty easy. Uh, okay. uh, they're pretty easy to work with. There are a lot of tutorials online how to connect the GPS to your Arduino and report the information from it. So what you ne would need to, uh, to is uh, combine both the GSM and GPS shields, which is something like this. Okay. Uh, keep them like this and uh, add a, a very small uh, program to your Arduino so when you send an SMS to your GSM shield it will collect the information from the GPS like where the car is and it will send you an SMS back with uh, the coordinates and if you attach those coordinates to OpenStreetMap or Google Maps uh, you actually get a link with the position of your car at the moment that's pretty neat to have uh, when you don't see your car in front of your 
home. So uh, uh, there is one other thing that uh, I uh, found after I built this thing at home uh, with uh, for my car. I found this device called Geogram One, uh, which actually combines both uh, GPS and GSM and Arduino on the same board. So now I don't have a free board. So I underneath here I should have an Arduino Uno, which means that this device is uh, just this big. So it's not very small, it's not extremely big, but it's not very small. And compare it with this one, which is uh, the same thing, the same three things are doing all with uh, GSM, GPS, uh, here, with uh, the ability to control some uh, relays. Uh, perfect, and it also has full firmware online at GitHub, so you can download it, upload it, and have this functionality with SMS messaging. Unfortunately, the SMS messaging is a tricky part because uh, uh, how would you authenticate yourself to this device? Uh, first of all, it works the pure uh, crypto capability, it doesn't have random number generator, uh, it doesn't have a very fast processor. So what do you do? Uh, in my case, I have pushed online only the part of the code that is uh, how to get the SMS message and how to authenticate uh, that this, this number that sent the SMS is a number that is allowed uh, in my list. But numbers are pretty easy to forge. Everyone here that has ever uh, played with VoIP knows that uh, spoofing a number is the easiest thing. You simply call your VoIP provider and tell them, okay, this is the number I want to get out of it. That's it. So you don't want the number to be the only thing. Uh, in my case, I added uh, one-time passwords for each command and I have to uh, upload a new list of uh, passwords every time they finish. Uh, it's stupid, but uh, it works. So it depends how much time, uh, how often you want to use the SMS messaging. The other thing uh, uh, is from uh, Deal Extreme. I haven't ordered that because I have all the other things here. Uh, but uh, a friend of mine told me that it works also, but it requires uh, Arduino Uno. It's a uh, GSM GPS shield that is uh, similar to this one, but also have the GPS here. Uh, it is connected directly to Arduino Uno. So, um, after that, uh, I wanted to have a Bluetooth authentication for my car. I simply don't want to open the car with my keys at all. Uh, obviously, the keys, the, the keyholes are easily pickable. Uh, it's uh, very easy to destroy them and uh, nobody actually cares about them uh, except me. So why should I keep them? I usually keep my phone with, uh, with me and most of you usually keep your phones with you and most of your phones uh, have Bluetooth in them and the thing that uh, I'm currently testing is uh, Bluetooth shield with uh, Bluetooth B uh, to authenticate my phone against uh, the um, Arduino and the Arduino simply opening the doors for me when I'm in range and the app says open. Uh, it's easy but i haven't done it still on my car uh, it's a work in progress and for this uh, you can actually combine uh, arduino leonardo with uh, bluetooth uh, transmitter and you get uh, uh, boe duino uh, sorry boe duino now the other thing uh, this is what saved my car last year uh, it's an rfid uh, reader uh, i actually have it here, uh, it's uh, 12, uh, it, this is the reader and uh, you usually need uh, a circuit board, so something like this one, or, mm, sorry, yeah, thank you, okay, so this is our Arduino Uno. <laughs> Usually when you have all the things stacked together, like this one, uh, give me a sec. <coughs> oh. 
almost there. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So uh, this is how big it is. And keep this in mind because I'll show you a little bit different Arduino in a bit. So for the uh, RFID, uh, this is the reader and this is the circuit board when you want to solder it uh, somewhere in your car instead of experimenting like with this one. So uh, what I did was having an Arduino, uh, a few relays, uh, something like these here. Uh, like this uh, in my car and controlled by the Arduino uh, if you start the car and 30 seconds after that the RFID haven't saw uh, a card that is whitelisted inside the Arduino uh, it simply stops the power to the fuel pump and uh, for my Land Cruiser I'm also thinking of a bit more things like uh, uh, stopping uh, the shift lever because you can block it and uh, disconnecting all the computers inside of, uh, of the car by uh, simply sabotaging the canvas. So uh, this thing saved my car last year because uh, I don't keep my RFID card uh, inside of the, uh, the car and uh, when they tried to steal the car they removed the starting computer they inserted their own starting computer that was linked to their keys but unfortunately 30 seconds after they started the car the car simply stopped it moved like a meter and a half so uh, <laughs> they tried it again it moved maybe a little bit more and it stopped <laughs> so uh, maybe they uh, they were scared i don't know but uh, they left the car there <laughs> So I was happy in the morning to call the police and uh, simply tell them, okay, someone tried to steal my car. Did they leave their RFID thing? Uh, no, the RFID is mine. Um, did they leave their starter? No, the, uh, they actually stole my, my starting computer. Uh, I had to go to Barcelona on a Euro trip on the next day, but unfortunately Toyota told me that I need at least two weeks to order the new starting computer. So the car was uh, a free ton of brick uh, in front of my home. <laughs> so, uh, the other thing, uh, Iridium. Why the hell would someone need a satellite phone or satellite tracking inside of their car? And I'll tell you why. This thing here uh, works on uh, very standard uh, frequencies like all of your phones here. And uh, the strange thing is that for these devices, you can buy uh, for $60 a jammer from the Chinese, the OX team again. It's even uh, cheaper. Yep, yeah, maybe. Uh, and uh, you can even do it without a jammer. You can simply get a transmitter from a microwave. Uh, <laughs> if used uh, properly, you wouldn't be uh, sterile for the uh, to the end of your life. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> so uh, you can jam the signals of uh, uh, your GSMs, and it's a problem for you because uh, jamming this means that you will no longer be able to. Uh, sent an SMS with uh, information where your car is. Uh, so I want to be sure that I have another way of reaching uh, my car. And since uh, Radium is not very uh, hmm, widespread in Europe, uh, I was sure that at least this thing would work. And it wasn't very expensive, it was like $150 or something like this uh, to have this board. It's Arduino compatible. So uh, it's a stripped version of uh, uh, their, uh, their device. It has uh, a satellite phone capability, but I'm using only the data so I can send uh, a packet to it and uh, receive uh, where the car is. So these are the devices that I keep <laughs> inside my car. Uh, the relays are very, very good because uh, you can have a, uh, a circuit board with many relays or uh, only one that uh, you need for certain uh, cables to be short circuit. Uh, I'm using similar devices like this but I removed the uh, LEDs because I simply don't want anyone to see that there are uh, uh, relays somewhere in the car because they are the protection of my car. So, uh, oh, fuck. Yeah. Mm. New cars, uh, uh, they require a wall of computing power simply to run. They have uh, 
computer for the brakes. They have computer for the starter. Uh, the starter. They have computer for uh, controlling the engine. They have another computer to control your speed. Another computer to control the other computers and uh, additional stuff like this. Uh, so uh, you have a computer for protecting your car, which obviously can be removed and replaced. Uh, so these things uh, require power, and they are not connected when you. Uh, when you haven't started your car. Also, uh, they require connectivity between them. So uh, I decided to cut the power to most of the computers uh, in my car on three to five different places. And uh, only me knows where these places are. And I did it in such a way that it wouldn't be impossible to repair it. It would require quite a few hours of uh, searching where the cables are uh, cut. So, uh, it was a very strange situation where what if something breaks when I'm like 2000 kilometers away from my home? I have to repair that. And that became the second issue. If you make it easily repairable, it's easily stealable. So, uh, I decided for a few of those devices to have a redundancy and uh, nothing else. I have relays. Double two relays, so if one doesn't work, I'll have a, a switch that only uh, uh, can be triggered again from the Arduinos, but only if uh, uh, I don't detect uh, the computers working. Uh, the other thing is uh, the car air network is a very, very fragile network infrastructure. Uh, if you cut only one wire, it would not work at all. Uh, so, I did it. <laughs> I simply don't need it uh, if uh, uh, the RFID card is not there. Really, it's pretty easy. So, uh, the thing that I really, really want to do is uh, detect the serial number of each computer that they are replacing, and if it is not my computer that came with my car, I want to uh, make it so that I can uh, push 12 volts to each pair of that computer so I can at least fry it. Because uh, these computers are expensive, like uh, 500 and more euros each. Uh, my startup computer was uh, 900 uh, euros. Uh, if I wasn't insured, uh, it would cost me 900 euros to replace it. So it would cost these guys either 900 euros to buy a new one paired with a key or steal a computer with a key from someone. So uh, that would be a good idea to read the serial number from the canvas and if it is not, break everything there, fry it. At least they will suffer as much as I will suffer. <coughs> I hate them. Uh, so, RFID protection, I already told you about that, uh, location tracking also, but uh, I usually uh, give my car to my brother or uh, if my wife wants to uh, drive with this car, uh, I simply want to be uh, easy for everyone in the family to exchange cars. So, uh, one of the things that I added to the GSM walk was uh, uh, on not only location tracking, but functionality to walk and unwalk uh, the car, and also functionality to start and uh, stop the car via SMS. Uh, now I'm going to replace this with Bluetooth because it's a lot easier and it's free instead of paying for SMSs and waiting for the SMS to come. You know, SMS is a reliable service, it's not uh, uh, guaranteed that your SMS will arrive today. So. Uh, <laughs> Relying on it, uh, it's a little bit tricky. Uh, the other thing is uh, I sabotaged not only the fuel pump, uh, but uh, I sabotaged uh, all the computers in each car that I have. Uh, in such a way that uh, uh, if you don't uh, know where they were sabotaged, you, were you would think that you need to replace them. Uh, the relays are not directly uh, connected to this Arduino. Usually I have a second Arduino, let's assume that this is an Arduino, and uh, they're connected uh, with uh, two wires, only two wires. The idea is that uh, I have a secret code here that is uh, also kept here, and you have to send the, uh, a few pulses with this code 
to the other Arduino and when it receives those pulses, after that, uh, then it will uh, close or open the relays. That's uh, where, uh, if you remove this thing, uh, you still need to know the code that it sends to uh, the other Arduino. And both Arduinos are in different parts of the car, so uh, if you see one of those, the other will be somewhere secret that you need to find it also. Again, uh, these are double in each car because uh, if something breaks, I need to replace it. <laughs> uh, so, uh, I also added uh, temperature control to my car because I, this was something that I did. Uh, that I started uh, using Arduino in my car simply because when it's hot outside and you enter in your car, uh, you simply want the car to know that you are hot, it's hot outside and you need to chill and uh, the air conditioning should be on and it should be on the lowest possible uh, temperature. And what I did was a very simple uh, program in Arduino with a temperature sensor and when the car starts it uh, checks the temperature outside, the temperature inside the, uh, the chassis and uh, it says okay uh, if the temperature outside is uh, very, uh, very hot or very cold I will turn on the uh, heater or the air conditioning and the, I will try to make 22 degrees inside of the car. So now I don't need to actually push any buttons in the pink car to uh, get hot or cold, uh, no matter is it winter or uh, a summer. So, uh, yes, uh, 30 seconds. Why 30 seconds you have to wait before uh, you start using uh, checking the RFID? Because I want uh, the uh, people that are stealing my car to be thinking, okay, we started, okay, we are, we are ready. And uh, no, uh, this is one of the things, but uh, the more important thing is that uh, uh, the Arduinos are not uh, there uh, separated from all the electricity uh, of this car by relays. After you start the car, you have a relay that starts the Arduino. And uh, that's uh, this is protecting the Arduinos from frying like the alarm. So they're not working, they're not connected at all to the car uh, when someone is trying to fry all the electronics in it. And this way, when you start the car, okay, we started, yeah. <laughs> 30 seconds later, no, you're not. Uh, one of the things is uh, uh, the fuel pump. Uh, the other thing is that you can simply direct, directly stop the engine. Stopping the engine for me is uh, something that uh, it's both good and bad. Uh, it's good because uh, you would stop the car immediately, but it's bad because uh, it tells the people that are stealing your car that there's something wrong here, we should track the cables that are for starting your car, for going to the starter. Uh, it's uh, very easy to spot these devices because the starter cables are one of the thickest cables in your car and the relays for those are big, pretty easy to spot, like uh, you don't need to search them too much. Uh, so I decided to not go by stopping my car, uh, I'll stop it any other way possible. Uh, so uh, the GPS should, uh, uh, sometimes uh, it's possible that your GPS is uh, uh, very slow in connecting to satellites, so for this Usually I advise you to find GPS shields that come with some cables and you can use uh, uh, outside antennas or uh, additional uh, amplifiers for signals uh, that are sold uh, everywhere and you can get better reception for uh, your GPSs. Uh, GSM, obvious. Uh, authentication, I told you, uh, walk and walk, start, stop. Uh, Okay, uh, if the car is uh, offline, this here is very important why it is only when the car is started. It's simply because, uh, uh, first of all, the 30 seconds delay and second of all, uh, if this all works constantly when your car is not started, it will drain power from your battery and if you are like me sometimes to be out of the country for a month, uh, it's possible that uh, your battery will die after, uh, while you're out. Uh, 
I'm thinking of adding a solar power uh, to this thing, but uh, I think it's enough when it's uh, started. If they started the car, I know about that. Uh, the other thing is, uh, one, a friend of mine proposed uh, having a separate power, separate battery only for uh, this thing, and this way I can uh, send an SMS to the car even if it is offline. Uh, this is how I implemented the walk and walk mechanism, but it's uh, on a separate Arduino. Actually, in my car currently we have five. <laughs> uh, I'm uh, working on uh, getting this uh, a little bit smaller. Uh, okay, so uh, the start button, uh, my pink car doesn't have a start button. And this is something that I'm used to in the Land Cruiser. You simply enter the car and push the start button, that's it. Uh, so I'm going to implement that uh, with one of the Arduinos. Uh, also, SMS start stop currently doesn't work because I had to uh, circumvent uh, the immobilizer of my car to start it. <laughs> Uh, so, uh, there are some power issues there, and the uh, Iridium uh, is uh, ordered, I still don't have it at home, but I hope that by the end of this month it will be at home. Bluetooth walk and walk, uh, I'm working on this and I'll publish the code for the Bluetooth walk and walk uh, for everyone on my, uh, on my GitHub account. Uh, resources, and before, while we're reading that, uh, Uh, I show you this RFID reader. Uh, these two are also RFID readers. Uh, they are different, but they do the same thing. They work on the same frequencies with the same cards. The, these are just different uh, manufacturers. Most of these don't have manuals online. The Spark from one has manual online, so it depends how good you are with hardware to understand how it uh, works and how you can make it work. Uh, the other thing that I want to show you is, uh, again, let's think about this GSM, uh, GPS shield, GSM shield and Arduino. This small thing here is an Arduino, uh, ICP uh, board to upload information to the Arduino, uh, Bluetooth, low energy, and a GPS shield. The same thing, uh, only GSM shield is missing from here. Uh, this is how small it can be, and you actually don't need one of the boards, the ICP board. You actually need only these three to make it work. And these three can actually go to this one, so uh, these are very simple, very small. These are tiny circuits, uh, Arduinos. I really love them <laughs> because uh, uh, it allows me to uh, to push this thing uh, in a very annoying places uh, in the car and hide it very easily because otherwise <laughs> it's a problem. Uh, so I think that's it. Do you have any questions? <laughs> yep. What about the ACU reflection? Uh, what? ACU reflection. What if someone reflashes your ACU? Uh, ECU, uh, I don't care about the ECUs because uh, this is my uh, argument. Now, someone has to find it and reflash it and also know the the key that uh, it needs to send to the uh, to the other Arduino. If he's so good, he would most probably know that he can download the firmware from the Arduino and find the key there, but you need some time for that. So, uh, with cars, uh, the only thing that you are protecting is not protecting the car uh, to be moved really, it's uh, uh, making it harder for the uh, attackers, uh, thieves, to uh, get out uh, with your car, start it and leave. You cannot protect it 100%. If someone wants, they will simply uh, remove some of the cables uh, in your engine compartment, start your engine manually by simply giving power to the starter motor and uh, uh, filling the, um, the fuel directly to the carburetor or whatever uh, you have. 
uh, and they will start your car, they will move it. That's not a problem, that's, uh, that's a given, that's a fact, it's not very hard to do and in some car services they're actually doing this when they're moving your car around uh, when it's not assembled. So it's not a very big issue. Issues, you can replace uh, uh, different things in them, you can even install spy software in them, but that's a different situation. It's not uh, protecting your car or at least delaying the uh, removal of your car. Why don't you play some of Arduino's with Android phone? You have a GPS, GSM, uh, RFID. Uh, how much time your phone is online without uh, recharging without it? Well, about a day, but you can connect it uh, to emulator. Yeah, and again, the same problem. Uh, these things should be at least, uh, should work at least a month without power at all, because uh, your car may be left for a month. At least in my case, it may be left even for m more time, because I have a car for off-roading, which I don't do often, and I have another car for traveling. And uh, one of my cars is constantly in my garage. So uh, if I leave it for two months, I would be very happy uh, if I go to the car and start it and not replace the battery. <laughs> battery is a very big issue. You want small things like uh, this thing than uh, anything bigger and uh, m for most of the things I actually don't need the real computing power of uh, the smartphone. It's good, I actually have a T61 Lenovo under the uh, passenger seat of the pink car for uh, storage wireless uh, movies, stuff like this, but <laughs> it's a completely different story. It works only when the car is started <laughs> and requires a lot of power. Any other questions? Yeah? You have a lot of problems with car theft in Bulgaria. <laughs> <laughs> uh, let me explain it like this. The pink car uh, was picked uh, four times to steal something from the car, not to steal the actual car because no one wants it. Uh, the other problem is, I, two years ago I bought the Land Cruiser and uh, the day I bought it, uh, the person I bought it from told me find where you can insure it and find how to protect it because they are stealing them a lot. Like if you have a very good new car, uh, BMW, Toyota or whatever, uh, you're fucked. <laughs> I don't know how it is in Serbia, but in Bulgaria you're fucked. You will be on the list of uh, people that uh, should be visited. <laughs> Any other questions? Why did you, why did you change the color to pink? Uh, it's my favorite color. <laughs> uh, you can see my shoelaces. <laughs> it's my favorite color. Uh, I still have problem with my marketing because if it was me, my company would be in pink. But marketing. <laughs> They don't like pink. Any other questions? Maybe the thief doesn't like the pink color as well. Uh, I, I still haven't convinced my wife that we have to paint the uh, Land Cruiser pink also. Uh, it would take me a little bit more because uh, the, the Patro is uh, our second car. It's only for off-roading and uh, uh, vacation stuff like this. She doesn't mind that. <laughs> but uh, when we are traveling across Europe with the car, uh, she <laughs> simply assumes that the great uh, car that we have for the Land Cruiser is better. <laughs> I don't know. I'll convince her, at least try. <laughs> it would be a good protection. <laughs> okay, so if there are no questions, thank you. <laughs>